While more people are growing grapes and more wine is being bottled, more tourists are visiting as well. On average, tourist visits to wineries in the Wine Islands are up 30 percent. And that's why tourism B.C. is taking notice and making wine and culinary tourism a top priority. At Salt Spring Vineyards, tourists sip on Pinot Gris and nibble on island cheese. It is the local touches visitors love. It's got a lovely slight pink hue and a beautiful brioche and berry nose. It is a personal and interactive experience that is catching on. It seems every year that we've been open, there's been a, a marked increase. Um, tourism, I think, overall has been down, but I think we've seen an increase. It's made from fruit grown here on the estate property. Agritourism is a combination of agriculture and tourism, where visitors get a first-hand look at life on a vineyard or farm. What we have is the opportunity to expose our visitors to a completely different experience, where they actually go and meet with the winemakers, the owners of the wineries, and they can create a little travel itinerary. Marlisa Hollins picks up guests at the Erie Resort for a wine tour. Her business has grown by 50% in the last year because of increased interest in the wine industry. Anything to do with food and wine is, is very up and coming here and people are starting to finally to realize that and, and come and visit and see what a beautiful place it is. <laughs> Ten years ago, the Zanata family added the restaurant Vinoteca to their vineyard, serving meals on the very veranda where they used to dine together. The dream started right when we started the winery because we've always had the veranda, we've always eaten lunch on the veranda. And now the rise in visitors is surprising even to them. Well, in a weekend, let's say a standard weekend in August, 10 years ago we would have had you know, 25 people stroll in and now we have probably about 200. Here's Demand is so great, the wineries banded together to produce a guide map for the region. We printed 120,000 brochures, and that was in um, March. And already, here we are in uh, just the beginning of September, we've gone through 100,000 of them. Benefiting from the success of the wine region... This is a fromage à la crème that we blended our blue cheese into. Cheesemakers and other local merchants... Well, it's almost symbiotic. The wineries are looking for other places for people to, to tour. The restaurant trade is uh, keen to purchase our product and the, the local vintners' product, and it just seems to work very well. Wine tourism may be the next big thing for the wine islands. In fact, it's hard not to get caught up in their contagious enthusiasm. We don't want wine to be hugely serious. I mean, we're serious about how we make our wine and how the product comes out, but really we want it to be a really exciting experience for people to come here. They want, we want them to have fun. We want them to relax. We want them to enjoy the atmosphere around here and enjoy the wines. And Canada Post is recognizing the wine industry with a collection of commemorative stamps. They are being unveiled in the Wine Islands. The Cowichan Wine and Culinary Fest was the site of the West Coast launch of the stamps, recognizing the growth of the industry here. While the wine industry grows, the Wine Islands has also seen the emergence of niche wines. Coming up, we'll look at organic wines and wines made from fruit, such as kiwi. But first, do you know how to properly uncork a bottle? Here's how. What we, we do is make sure that we cut up um, a perfect circle off here so you're not getting any wine spilling into the, the seal. Uh, take the, uh, the seal off and then um, with my corkscrew uh, find the center of the cork, um, turn it till it gets to be two-thirds of the way in uh, and then you want to lever it and then pull it out gently. And then take the cork off, uh, present it to the, to the guest. The Wine Islands is brought to you in part by the Cowichan Region, the heart of the Wine Islands.